question here. Okay. Curious to know the correlation between Technodad's Atmos speaker placement theory using the Dolby Atmos mixing software and the placement based on speaker psychoacoustics by Anthony Grimani. Hmm. So I was on a call yesterday. After I picked, I picked up my mom from the LAX at one o'clock. Gosh, that was a pain in the butt. Guess what time we got home? Okay, so you went there at one p.m. I got there at one p.m. Uh, four. Damn it! Yes, you know, was that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was just there, bro. So I, I have an it's idea. Her, what it took her one hour to get her bag from the freaking thing. I was like, "What are you talking about?" Thank God I parked. Right, because she's like, "Oh, you're just gonna cruise around." It was like twelve forty-five. I'm like, "Nah, I'm gonna park." Thank God I did that. Otherwise, I'd have been like out of gas or some shit. Yeah, know. that's why you try to fly out of those small airports when you can. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, no, but she was she's been out of the country for like two weeks. So she's mm. like, doing all the kinds of cool stuff. Uh, but I almost forgot about this call, so I get I, we get back home, and then all of a sudden I get a reminder at four o'clock. I'm like, "Oh crap! I got this call at five o'clock." So, Nicholas. I, this is kind of based off of your question. I was on a call with someone from Dolby. Dolby? Did a lot of, did a lot of work for Dolby. Uh-huh. And this was through another person. Uh, remember that guy, Nick Mansky? He did, he did, he's, he did like a mix or something like that. Okay. Uh, an Atmos mix or whatever. Posted on Facebook. Anyway, he's he hit me up and he's like, "Hey, you know, do you want to?" I'm talking to these people. Da 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 da. You know, I mentioned your name and he wanted to like talk to you. He said he's got something to say. I was like, "Oh, okay." And I'm like, Ooh. "Ready, ready with my bat." You know, uh. smack him across the head in the Zoom. No, just kidding. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, he's like, "Don't worry, Chana. It's nothing bad." I'm like, "I don't care if it was bad. If you're telling me I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, I don't care. You just tell me." He's like, "No, uh, what's your?" Talking about with the speaker placement, he's like, "You are one hundred percent correct. That's how you should do it." Oh, <laughs> you should have got. Hold on, can can you say that again? Yeah, can you say that again? Uh no, I he's he's coming on. Uh, he's coming on my my stream like in a couple of weeks. Oh, uh, nice. Uh he did the mix for the last the Atmos mix for the Last of Us for a bunch of he has he has, he has a bunch of credits. Um, and he told me some very, very interesting other stuff that I can't mention because, uh, but it's something that everybody fights about on the Facebook groups. Mm. <laughs> so, so anyway, Can you kind of uh, tell the topic or you can't say, even say the topic. No, I, it, it has to do with, uh, Disney's the oh. way Disney does their Atmos stuff. Oh, nice. All right. All right. All right. Um, so curious to know the correlation. Well, you don't, it, I, I, I don't know. Um, I know that, um, you know, Joe, you do a lot of psychoacoustics, right? You know a lot about that. Um, I haven't, I don't know what he's referring to because I would like to see this. I have a lot of respect for Anthony Grimani and nothing that I've heard him say is ever like, what the heck is this guy talking about? Like, it's like, always like, either from his experience doing yeah. lots of calibrations or, you know, it's based on something. So even if we disagree, it's still like, oh, I, I understand why you came to that conclusion, right? And mm-hmm. I think if we talked about our method to also understand, like, hmm, I understand why you came to your conclusion, right? So it's not, we're, we're talking about where to place speakers. I don't think anybody's, like, having a big fight over that. <laughs> why? You know, like, oh, I'm, my goodness, you said okay. you said to place speakers. Where? No way. <laughs> we can't be friends uh, with Yeah, so um, I don't know exactly. If you could maybe post a link to a video or um you know yeah, article, a little, like what he said a little more information about that nick nicholas yeah. uh Please. but you, even shauna so what is your recommended height speaker location i, I think uh, we not agree exactly 100%. yeah um i i say um you know if you have seven ear level speakers minus the center channel mimic what you got on the ear level up on the top that's it. But you've said something before about six height versus four <laughs> height. Six, yeah, I, w- I would go six height. Now, it, I you know, front height and rear height on on wall, high up on wall, not on ceiling. I think that will image center objects pretty well, right? Mm-hmm. I've heard it do, do that pretty well. But for those that really just want mm-hmm. overhead, for those like rain sounds, 
Oh, that's watching. that's what we disagree with. Yeah, that's like, what we disagree on. Yeah, where because you said you would put the top middle heights in ceiling, in ceiling. Yeah, I put those in ceiling because to just to get just to get that overhead sensation that everybody wants. They want to feel you know whomever pissing on their head, whatever. You know, I mean the rain. Uh, R Kelly. <laughs> Drip, drip, drip. <laughs> Pee on you. Oh, haters gonna yeah, hate. So, uh, so you believe? Love. So you you think uh, you're you're compromising here? Then you're saying, all right, all right. You guys look in for ceilings, those. Go ahead and put them in ceiling. You're I, saying you know, no. people, people complain so much about it. I'm like, okay, fine, fuck it, do it. And at the end of the day, it's essentially the we're back to the Oro 3D layout. Right. Essentially, we're we're instead of just a one speaker up right above you, it's two. Right. Okay. So so essentially, it's that. And you know, of course, in my video, I did not say Oro 3D because I know people <gasps> freak out. Right. You know yeah. they. <gasps> right. Yeah. It's okay, Jeremy. It's okay, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that that's what I'm. That that's kind of why I say like just do six heights and call it a day. Okay. Um. It's a little overkill. The mm -hmm. receiver, minimum receiver for that is a Denon 6700. You know, if you're going 716. So there's a lot of... Can, can we disagree just for the sake of disagreeing on yeah, sure. you know, for, for, for the podcast? You know? You're wrong, Joe. You're yeah. wrong. <laughs> you know how long I've been doing this? <laughs> so <laughs> I would say, I would say, what's wrong? What's wrong with uh, on wall? surround heights like you know like instead of top middle right okay so uh the the speaker side so the how what do you even call them top middle on wall height basically i'm saying uh so instead around of how? Feeling, so Ryan, on, surround height on the wall are are they are they pointed at you this way yeah okay so here here's the situation it's it's easier if i show you hold on All right. Oh, and by and by the way, um, if you guys thought I was at my house, <laughs> gotcha, suckers. This is just the green screen. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, bitch. Um, let's see. I you got me. I'm like, oh, dude, you're at home. All right. <laughs> I got you. Joe. Okay. So, but what you've said in the last video is that top middles that are kind of like closer to you, right? Uh, essentially. I mean. Oh, they, I'm gonna they, get they, you now, bro. Yeah, yeah. You could do that. Hold yeah. on. Here, I'll, no. uh, what am I looking for? What am I'm I? I'm sorry, for? but you're wrong. Okay, good. Tell me why I'm wrong. <laughs> tell me. Well, I'll tell you why. Because, because you know, using the spatial audio calibration toolkit, there's this. Uh, there's a mode where you can pan. You know, the object pans from the front, top front, mm -hmm. to the rear, mm -hmm. and if you have your speakers above you, it's going to make like an hourglass shape. Hmm. You yeah. know, it's gonna come in and then back out. Why not just have it go straight back, Fuck. like the renderer shows? Please tell me why. Why would I want that? What am I doing? I don't know. What are you doing? I'm trying to. Um, I'm opening up Logic, okay. but I forgot I just updated it. Um, and then I got to sign in over here. Gmail. Do do do. So, <clears throat> one of the things that I notice. Oh damn! It's gonna like feedback or something. How do I okay. make it feedback? So while you're getting that set up, what would how would you respond to that? How do I respond yeah. to what? Well, if you place the speakers in closer, then the object's not gonna go straight in a line. It's gonna come in. Well, see, so out. if 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 you have, well, I guess it just depends on the dispersion pattern of the you know in ceilings. I would imagine, you know. If you were to like throw something, like throw a ball, right? It would engage the front height. And as it leaves that area, it'll catch like the outside perimeter of the dispersion pattern of the in ceiling, float right above you, and then get to the edge of that. And then it'll pick up again, you know, where the rear height is. Mm -hmm. so it's, that's, that's at least what I'm picturing. You know, if it does that, I don't fucking know. Yeah. I mean, it's hard, hard to say. I see what you're kind of saying, but if they're placed closer, inward mm -hmm. then they're gonna sound closer it, inward it, it, yeah well uh, i mean if you think about it do you have your heights going straight or are they angled like your front left and right 
front left and right your well, main front left and right they're towed in right do mm -hmm. you tow in your heights as well mm, no because they need to be up against the wall if i could i would right right so in your case then yeah I, in, in your case the wall. in your case then yeah i would put the in ceilings at the edge like at the edges right and so the you know the drip 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 will still rain down on you I guess what I'm saying, why not why not put the top middles in line directly with the front front left and right and the rear left and right? Why should they be in more? You know, the closer they are inward. I guess it just depends on your setup. I if 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 you're towing in your left and right and your rear left and right heights, mm -hmm. then yeah, put them in a little, put the middles in a little bit because that center is actually gonna be a little bit below your ceiling height. Yeah, but toe in, toe out is is about aiming, right? Mm -hmm. Aiming and being on access to the thing, but that doesn't have to do with where the source of the sound comes from. You know, the source the source of the sound is going to be where you actually place the speaker. You know, yes, yeah. So that that's I guess where I would kind of disagree is I think having them in line. So if you have front on wall and rear on wall. Uh -huh. You know, having having the top middles in line with those, I think, makes more sense. Okay. Fantastic. That's it. You're wrong. But yeah, you're wrong. Does it really make a huge difference? Would it Would it be like, oh my goodness, I got <laughs> you got to change this setup because I just can't, I can't, I can't deal with this setup. It's just wrong. I can't, I can't it's handle just it. Wrong. No, of course not. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing that nothing you know write a mama about right okay so let's see here what are you showing all us? right so essentially oh god please don't crash please don't crash please don't crash okay. oh this is new oh look at that it didn't oh, crash. Look at that. new look new look yeah this i just updated this is brand new oh okay um they have the trim and down mix settings and stuff like that too which is fantastic uh, i wonder is it here no oh here see yeah. this this is all new oh oh that's all in there now you still yeah, have to do my, it in the render. Cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so here, so the issue that I I am having, um, if you put so if, this would be the surround height, right? You know, if you put your surround, if you're in a, you're backed up to the wall, and your surrounds are flanking you, right? And then your rear heights are also doing that. When I put something here. I'm going to hear it out of my rear height more than I am the front height because the front height is aiming forward, but the rear height is aiming this is rear height is aiming this way. Front height is aiming this way. And they're supposed they're getting equal volume so they can meet in the center that's here on the screen, but they're not meeting there. I, I'm not sure I'm getting that. So front is okay. pointed here. The front height is pointed here, right? Okay. It's pointed into the room. The pointed rear in. height. The rear height, because you know, I only have five year level speakers. So my back is to the wall. So where I imagine this there's a wall right here behind the head. Right. Mm -hmm. And so this rear height is now um facing the top of the head. Right? So the it's rear height. The okay. Yeah. Instead of it being all the way back here, pointed forward, mm -hmm. right? Because how does how do these two speakers make this sound here? Right? They do it because here. So you're talking about four speakers, but the the rear surrounds are not in the optimal place. Correct, correct. I I had to deal with that at my house, um, um, you know, up in Mammoth. Here, let me mm -hmm. duplicate these. But things. that's speaker placement issues, issues. which yeah. which a lot of people actually uh, deal with. Uh, yes, correct. So um, I'm just saying this is something that I noticed, um, and it's blatantly obvious uh, to me. Mm. All right, so here's here's what we got. Okay. All right. All right. So instead of here, which one's the middle one? This is the middle one. Okay. So um come on. Come on, logic. Jesus. There we go. Okay. So if both of these speakers are facing each other, right? Mm -hmm. Whenever something comes into the middle, they're going to image perfectly. But uh when this uh your surround speaker is not in the same, is not pointed at the other speaker i.e it's like um you know it's like kind of here and then it's just pointing at you this way mm -hmm. you're not going to hear the middle height in this location 
right? Because you're getting volume from here because the AVR doesn't exactly know yeah. where you're pointing okay. the speaker, right? Okay. So this is another thing that I noticed, like where I, I you know, I because I listen to it, I'm like, shit, I'm hearing this wrong. Even yeah. my mixes, I'm just hearing it wrong. Um, yeah. Wrong in the sense of like, this is the limitation of the room, which is causing this this issue. So. Well, yeah, you know, I think we're all kind of saying the same thing. So Reverend Slim was saying, the reality is this. We are getting hum hung up on more precise steering in spaces where pre precision isn't that important. Focus more on the region of the room rather than the exact steering. Um, I would say, though, that in a smaller home environment, you can tell where the speaker is. You know, we're yeah. not in a theater where you can just say, oh, sounds kind of over in this area. There's no this area, right? It's like when it hits that speaker, I know it's at that speaker. It's obvious, right? Very obvious when it snaps to a, a speaker in front of us. So I think that's why I'm not saying getting hung up on this, but why it may be a little bit more uh, important for a home situation because it's more noticeable, you know? And, and I think the end of the day, you need to put your speakers in the best possible location, right? First, first and foremost. If you cannot, then you will have a suboptimal experience just because you, there's no way to fake that. Unless you have a trend off, maybe, maybe that can do some remapping and trick you a little bit better. But for the most part, where the speaker is, where the sound's coming from. So what does this have to do with your recommendation of putting... Uh, the ceiling speakers, the top that, middle. That, I, that's just one of the things I noticed and makes me feel like, yeah, we should just roll with six. Like four is good depending on on how it's laid out. Because I have four, but if it's uh -huh. not laid out where where they're you know facing mm -hmm. each other, then yeah. you're gonna get you're gonna get differences in it. That's I, uh, I, that's what I'm saying. So I would say that four would be good if you can place them in the correct locations, though. And if yeah. you don't have a huge room where there's a ton of space between the speakers, you know, mm -hmm. if you're somewhat in the center, you know, that's also a thing. Where are you sitting? Right. Yeah. If you're closer to the back, then it's also not going to image perfectly. So, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, Nicholas, that, that actually is my, my YouTube plaque. This is my set from my house, from the house. I'm just in the studio. I, don't, <laughs> I didn't want to bring all that shit here. <laughs> so I cheated. Uh, how about another? How about another question? Are any comments related to this? Well, there's okay. Um, let's bring them up. Let's highlight uh, them. I tow all six heights in and are in line with the bed, lo bed layers, level speakers. Uh, the size of the room is irrelevant. It's the angles between the speakers and aiming for coverage. More than that, um, is it? Here's a question: Is it equally important to have your ceilings acoustically treated? Probably not. Nah, not probably not as important. Michael Squires agrees with Jeremy. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Do you agree that height speakers are better than in ceiling speakers? Yeah. I just like them for aiming purposes, you know. They're, they do have ceiling speakers where they have an angled baffle, and that would probably be very useful. So, again, it, it depends. You know, if you can get that correct angle where you're where they're aiming towards you and not bouncing down on the floor and just doo -doo 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 -doo, back <laughs> down, you know, that's not a that's not a good effect. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's I used to live in Mammoth Lakes, so it's not. It's not another home. I just used to live there. That's all. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. What Sean is talking about is there's a workaround with a little delay in level. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you can't get around the Haas effect. So Haas effect is basically where do you hear the sound from first? You know, our yeah. ears know where it comes from because it hits this ear and there's a slight difference and you can tell timing wise and there's no amount of delay or level that can Fool your brain into knowing where the originating source is. Yeah. So there's just that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. There are times when I hear things on the side walls where there are no speakers. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah, is that's true. He's that's he's talking about his Arendel 1723 towers, and they and do do that. They do that. I have they, those. They do do. They do 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 that. Yeah. 
like you'll hear it, like it's reflecting off the side. And because mm -hmm. the um, directivity is so good, your brain gets fooled into thinking like, oh, it must be something over here. It's pretty cool. Cool effect. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, does the AVR have anything to do with how you place your speakers? I, 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 don't, I think the AVR assumes you're putting it into a... Um, at Dolby recommended <laughs> layout or something like that. But at the end of the day, it has no idea like where the speakers are facing. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you got it on a lampshade or a tabletop, like it doesn't, it has yeah. no idea. It, does, it doesn't look at your room. It knows how far the speaker is. Yeah. They could be all stacked up on top of each other. And if they're all the same distance, it just says, oh, they're the same distance. It has no idea where they are around your room. Yeah. Um, what is, uh, let's see, this is a good one. He says, Nicholas says, you want the speakers to disappear into the room using phantom imaging. You don't want to co-locate the speaker. Um, do you want to be able to locate the speaker? I think you will be able to locate the speaker, right? At the end of the day, um, you'll know where the speaker is. I mean, play this, uh, spatial intestines, pay the, play the pink noise. And close your eyes, and do you think you'll be able to tell when it snaps to a speaker, when it, when the sound is actually at a speaker at 100%? Pretty sure you can. I don't care how well your your system is calibrated. You can just tell when it's at a speaker. Why? Because let's say there's an object, and it's going between your, your uh, let's just say your front left and your left surround. When the object's at your front left, there are reflections that are happening. But when it gets to the middle, it doesn't have its own reflections. It just, it's, you know, it's the sound between the two speakers. So you'll hear yeah. the reflections from the left speaker, the reflections, the room reflections, and interaction from your surround. But the, the object itself doesn't have its own reflections versus if you took your uh, took a speaker and you actually moved it. Moved it. Then, then, then the sound, then the moving sound has a reflection. Then it sounds perfect. That that's one of the reasons why, um, you'll see in the you know the mixes I do in the render, I put the sounds where the speakers are, so that they all mm -hmm. have the same cohesive reflection. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if we put them in between, and you know uh, my buddy uh, Burkai was here, the Void Striker. I'm doing his Atmos mix, mm -hmm. and I showed him some stuff like I I had these two objects going around the head like this, like right yeah. above you. He's like, it doesn't sound like that. Yeah. It, that looks cool, but it doesn't sound like it that. Doesn't sound like like, that yeah. No, it doesn't. it doesn't. I mean, we we we, we do tricks um, for spatial group where we may add our own reflections. Right? We may, you know, I'm not going into the detail of all our our our, our bag of tricks, but we may make our own reflections that kind of override, you know, or they're they're just kind of so obvious that that they kind of override what's actually happening with your speakers. Um, you know, it's just one of the tricks. So when you pan something, it doesn't have actual reflection. Well, made up reflections. They don't have actual reflections, but we can kind of make that up and yeah. So it's kind of a cool trick. Make sure to check out our audio only version of the podcast at anchor.fm forward slash daily hi-fi, or just go to your favorite podcasting service and search for daily hi-fi.